Welcome to our e-learning class. In this semester, you are going to take syntax course. The way it is conducted is just the same as it was in the last semester via internet. Due to the fact that the outbreak of coronavirus cannot be controlled up to the present time. Now, what is syntax? Syntax is a branch of linguistics dealing with rules, principles, and processes of how phrases, clauses, or sentences are constructed grammatically. As we go further, let us first of all try to examine the position of syntax in linguistics. Now you know that language or linguistic has its component or internal components that we call core namely sounds, morphemes, words, phrases, clauses, or sentences. Sounds are the smallest units of language. But this is very essential, for there will be no words, phrases, or sentences without sounds. This is why there is a special linguistics dealing with sounds, namely phonetics and phonology. Phonetics takes up the matter of how sounds are produced by organs of speech, how they are classified according to manner of articulation, whether the production results in vibration in the vocal cords, how the production of sounds result in waves of air, and how the airs are perceived by the ear. This is the area of phonetics analysis. Now listen. Uh, I can give you an example how these sounds are produced Yes, like B, it is pronounced by closing the two lips, upper lip and lower lip tightly, and then the air from vocal cords is forced to pass through mouth, resulting in plosive sound or stop. This is why, according to the vocal cords, whether it is vibrated or not, we can say voiced or voiceless. And the manner of articulation, how it how the air passes through mouth or nose, yes, there will be plosive, for example, and then there will be uh, bilabial, like p. This is voice by labial stop voice by labial stop this is actually what phonetics is about now it does not talk about meaning at all it terminates at that point how the sounds are organized is the area of interest of phonology for example like in the word big, there is a sequence of sounds p, uh, e, and g. How they are composed is the area of the analysis of phonology. Of course, phonology will consider whether the composition of the sounds abides by phonotactic rule of a given language or, in this case, English. This is phonology. It does deal with meaning analysis. But there is additional, or there are some additional aspects of phonology area. Say, for instance, the effects of adjacent sounds on one another. Say, wanted. Derive, that is okay. That derives from want as a free morpheme, 
followed by it as a bowel morpheme. Yes. The final sound sounds t wanted instead of wanted. Why? Because the final sound is affected by the preceding sound t that is voiceless and it becomes voiceless. Another one edit that derived from add plus it the same morpheme. It sounds added instead of edit because the preceding sound the is voiced and it affects the following sound to be the same or to be similar to it voiced. Another example of phonology analysis is the quality of sound or single sound in accordance with different positions. For example, peak, p, takes the position or uh, initial position, but stop, p, takes the position of final one. Now, is there any difference within them between the two varieties? Yes. In terms of meaning, maybe not, but in terms of quality of aspiration of those two sounds are slightly different. Now look, whenever sounds are combined according to phonotactic rules of a given language, then there will be a word. Yes? There will be morphine, yes? Morphine, for example, big, yes? It's a morphine, and it's also a word, yes? Then there will be bigger. This is the combination of free morphine and bound morphine, bigger. Of course, this combination results in difference of meaning. The analysis of how words are constructed, internal construction of words, is the interest of morphology. Okay? Then the words or okay, or the words when combined together, they combination will result in larger unit of language that we call phrases. The phrases are a group of words having head, yes, being modified, being qualified, supporting a single meaning. Say for example, a girl as a head, that is a noun, then it can be a beautiful girl. Beautiful is modifier and a is determiner. Yes. So head modifier determiner. And it can be extended to the right. A beautiful girl from America. From America is a qualifier. So phrase has a structure. But we don't talk too much about this at the present time. And there will be more kinds of phrases, namely adjective phrase, verb phrase, adverbial phrase, and prepositional phrase. All right? Now you see, in the next step, when words or phrases are combined, there will be also a larger unit of language that we call close or sense. In addition, that the sequence or sequences have to abide by minimum requirements of a structure of a close or a sentence. The girl came. The girl came 
is a sentence or clause because it has subject the girl and came as a verb that function as a predicate. So this is a clause or a sentence. And then we can also extend this. For example, the girl kissed me. This is subject, verb, object or SVO. And we can also extend this. For example, she gave me a book. S V O O. And then it could also be S V C. Subject, verb, and complement, as in his teacher. This is a minimum structure of a clause or a sentence. Now it's important for you to remember that to determine whether a sequence of words is a phrase or a sentence does not depend on how long or how short the sequence is. Even though the sequence of words is short enough like the girl came, yes, being composed of three words is a sentence because it abides by the rule of sentence. But a girl from America, a beautiful girl from America, which is longer than the girl came, is not a sentence, it's a phrase, just because it does not abide by the rule of sentence or clause. So as a student of linguistics, your perception of sequence of words should be different from that of lay peoples. Yes, lay people tend to say a phrase is a sentence, a sentence is also a sentence. So there is a difference. Okay, the next one. The syntax or the structure of sentence can be approached from different types of grammar. The one that I stated just now is an approach of traditional grammar that gives emphasis on the correctness of word order, tense, agreement between subject and predicate, and then the agreement between number and nouns following it. This is the grammar that is widely learned in schools. But this structure can also be approached by another type of grammar. For example, generative grammar or transformational grammar. If I say the same sentence, the girl came, this is approached by determining the components of the girl came. The girl is NP, noun phrase. And K is VP, yes, that finally terminates to become noun, yes, girl, right? Now, look at this. Of course, there are more types of grammar that can approach the structure of a phrase, clause, or sentence, but this is not our concern in the current occasion, we'll talk about it later on. Now, just before I put an end to my lecture, I just want to you to understand that syntax concentrates on the constructions of phrases, clauses, and sentences. I thank you for your attention and for your enthusiasm. See you next time. Goodbye.